Well, this is Father Adam, and I'd like to point out to you on this Good Friday, when we hear the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ read in church, but now read in your domestic church, which I hope you have done, read the passion of the Lord according to John, you will hear that Jesus says, it is finished. He doesn't say, I am finished, because the horror of the crucifixion does not win. It does not have the last word. At the heart of the horror of the crucifixion is hope. God refuses to let the horror that we experience, the brutality, win. Because love always wins. Violence never has the upper hand. Death does not win. Death never has the last word. It's finished, but it ain't over. Love could not be killed on the cross. And the cross reveals that God, who is love, is even in the heart of horror. The horror of a coronavirus death the cross, because that's what Jesus died of. The crucifixion happened on a particular day in a particular time in history, but the crucifixion continues to happen whenever human life is invaded by senseless and meaningless suffering. The crucifixion of Jesus was completed, but it is not over. Jesus continues to suffer when we suffer. When human beings suffer, he suffers because we are the body of Christ. And when we have pain inflicted on us and problems and all that we go through in our life, and when we bleed, he bleeds. The crucifixion continues to happen in hospital rooms, particularly right now during this coronavirus pandemic. It continues to happen when your loved one is sick or when you lose your loved one or when you find out that your loved one has attempted suicide, the crucifixion continues to happen when children and vulnerable adults are abused mentally, physically, and sexually. The crucifixion continues to happen when babies are killed, when women are abused and taken advantage of. It continues to happen in all the people who are trafficked in the human trafficking that is taking place in the world, in the slavery that exists in the women and the children and the vulnerable people who are enslaved in the world, in the sex trade industry. It happens when Women and men are raped by power-hungry people who want power and who want to feel good by taking charge and advantage of somebody. It happens when you are abused or mistreated or spat upon or beaten. It happens when you bleed from the insults of your loved ones or when you bleed from the pain of being cheated on or left behind or dumped by someone who said they would be with you forever and then they left you. It happens. The crucifixion continues in every suffering person in every battlefield, everywhere where there is violence, where there is war, where there is disease, where there is pain, where there is suffering. The crucifixion continues to happen when you are mistreated, when you are wronged, when people make things up about you, when they talk about you, when they're jealous, when they gossip. It happens. God continues to be crucified in our world and God continues to be crucified not in Jesus but in you who are Jesus because you are his body the crucifixion continues to happen when your dreams get torn apart 
or when your career gets torn apart or when your marriage is torn apart or when your heart is torn apart. The crucifixion happens when you are bullied, when you are made fun of, when you are called names like ugly or fat. The crucifixion happens when racism is inflicted upon you and prejudice and envy. The crucifixion happens in the people who suffer from immense poverty and where there's greed and love of money and materialism, where people are trampled upon and used for the almighty dollar. The crucifixion is happening all around us when addiction takes over people and when you fear when you feel trapped by your fear and your worry and your depression and gloom and darkness that take over you, the crucifixion continues to happen. And the crucifixion happens when we bury our loved ones and when we cry out to God and we don't get a response as Jesus didn't when he said, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? in the pitch black of night, when your lungs get filled with fluid and you're drowning and you say, my God, where are you? But even though Jesus said, where are you? Notice he said, my God, because it was still his God. And it's still our God that we cry out to who is there because it is finished but it is not over. We may wrestle with abandonment, but what we are really wrestling with is with the abandoned one. And that's a good thing because the only way to encounter him is to get down and dirty and messy with him and to confront him. And when do we confront him? On the cross. When you are wrestling with abandonment and with the feelings of not being able to make it, you are really wrestling with the abandoned one who is as abandoned as you are. And the one we are complaining at is abandoned as well, isn't he? He too is abandoned as we are abandoned because he is our body. We are his body. Whatever happens to the head happens to the body, to the members. And what happens to the body, to the members, happens to the head. He's there with you. He's still your God. That's why Jesus didn't say, God, why have you abandoned me? But he said, my God, because even though I may be suffering, I may be on the cross, I may be drowning in fluid, this coronavirus may be taking over me, but I, I am still confident that you are my God and you will take me through this. And only when we confront death, we can find the one who died for us. When we carry our cross, as he did, we meet the one who carried his cross for us. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I love you very much. Don't ever lose hope. God is with us. It will all be fine. The resurrection is coming. It's the sacred triduum. It's a three-day liturgy. Yes, death never wins. Jesus wins. And Jesus is with you wherever you're at. And I'm praying for you. And I love you.